So tell us about where we are and what is proposed for this site. This is the uh, original location of the McKinley Coast Guard Station. We are here because this is the proposed site for the Lakeshore Indian Tribute Sculpture. What happened at that station 50 years ago and why is it relevant to the sculpture itself? Well, on uh, the dark of the early morning of Saturday, August 14th of 1971, a handful of Milwaukee's urban Indians, uh, which represented uh, a number of Wisconsin's tribes, came down here and tore the plywood off the doors of the abandoned Coast Guard station and began a decade-long occupation. They cited the Treaty of Fort Laramie, which gave Indians the right to all abandoned federal structures because they were built on their lands. They were also clever enough to negotiate with the Bureau of Indian Affairs and had this Coast Guard station declared an Indian cultural, educational, and civic center. We want to highlight the drastic need of our people. There are funding agencies, government, state, etc., that have monies to help and are helping other people. But they've neglected us, the first Americans. And they soon moved a number of um, Indian social services in here. They uh, moved the Indian community school in here while it was in its infancy. And over the next nine years, it grew into a respectable secondary Native American educational organization. Tell us a little bit about the sculpture and the artist. Well, the sculptor is a gentleman named Alex Pentec. He's from Ireland. He won a commission to um, honor the spirit of the Choctaw Indians who in the depths of their poverty reached out and uh, sent scarce funds to feed Irish families during the Great Potato Famine of 1847. The original sculpture is called Kindred Spirits and it is a circle of 20-foot stainless steel feathers that dance on their quills. He has made an offer to us to replicate that sculpture here on this site as a tribute to Wisconsin's Indians. Yes, it ref reflects the history and yes, it responds to our shared heritage, the sort of the, the native Choctaw bonds but um, that also it speaks to humanity and standing together against adversity and that that's a message that continues on into the future to have as much meaning today as it did back then. And it's because of these things that we are looking and the artist has offered to replicate his sculpture here to bring attention to the unity of Wisconsin's Indians um, how important is this to have native representation like this in Milwaukee? The Great Lakes Intertribal Council um, has endorsed the project and they represent Wisconsin's tribes and also the Oneida ESC group which is a global engineering and construction company owned by the Oneida Nation of Wisconsin has agreed to be the general contractor. So what's significant here is that this will be an indigenous um, project. However, I think it is important that the non-native community um, come together and see to it that this offer from the artist is accepted. I grew up here and I think it's significant that there isn't a substantial piece of public art dedicated to the Native American history that is so prominent. And here we are on this incredible shoreline and these historic rivers and all of the land that this beautiful community is built upon are all indigenous lands. The Indians considered them sacred and lived here, hunted here uh, for thousands of years before the European explorers. We think that uh, this should be celebrated. So, Perry, you've already uh, put a lot of time and effort into this project. You've done a lot of the legwork, but what still has to be done to get this accomplished? Well, the sculptor has told me that um, he won't begin fabricating um, the feathers for this sculpture 
until we've confirmed that Milwaukee County has accepted his offer and that there's approval to place the sculpture here in uh, McKinley Park and that we have raised the necessary funds to secure the implementation. I will point out that he's already identified a number of metalwork companies here in Milwaukee that are capable of fabricating the sculpture, so it will be a product made in Milwaukee. I'm hoping that once the sculpture is in place that when the public sees it, and when the world sees it, that they will be reminded or in many cases perhaps taught for the first time that for 130 years from the 1860s to all the way up to the 1990s, the United States government maintained and sponsored 350 Indian boarding schools, 11 of which were in Wisconsin and one was in Milwaukee, in fact. Um, all of this was done in the name of assimilating generation after generation of Indian children um, into American society. Uh, in fact, though, it was really Indian cultural genocide. And giving back the heritage to the Indian community one generation at a time. This is the mission of the Lakeshore Indian Tribute Sculpture.